So uh, here Joe and I are. We're going our letter to Judge Lindy Baker. At the Woodstock Post Office. Yeah, the Woodstock Post Being Office. We're just showing it. And this is going to Josephine County Circuit Court to the trial administrator for Judge Baker and Prosecutor Casso. We're sending it by registered mail so that it's out of the jurisdiction of the United States Corporation and the District of Columbia. And this is what you have for to show that it's registered. It's much more expensive to send it registered, but if you do that, you're on your first steps to uh, going back to the organic constitution with your rights. Without getting your picture in, would you state the date? No, I'm going to state. Oh, okay. You guys can do it. Okay. I'll give you. I'm the date is the 31st of January. Nobody is denying that it's the 31st of January today. Okay. Uh, 2012. 2012. 2012. Thanks. And there's my beautiful wife. <laughs> okay, cut. <laughs> the receipt for registered mail, and I'm going to read to you what we're writing to Judge Lindy Baker, who oddly enough has the same name as Lindy Heiss, although she spells it differently. Dear Judge Baker, we are writing as a friend of the court on behalf of Lindy Heiss. We have done research for Lindy on the court system and how it profits from incarcerating people who have not harmed anyone. When there is no victim, no corpus delecti, there is no crime. Your court is a commercial court incorporated with the Dun and Bradstreet number. We have given Lindy the results of our research, and we are sending Lindy's version of the research we have sent her on to you. We have reviewed it and find it accurate with our research. We believe a commercial court sentencing people for profit is criminal under the Constitution. We ask you to consider this when you have Lindy High standing before you. Thus, we are submitting to you, for your most serious consideration, Lindy's copy and documentation with case sites on unregistered foreign agents, which show the fraud perpetrated by commercial courts, as well as the Chris Court Registry Investment System, which is how the courts profit off incarcerations. We sincerely wish that you would see justice done and dismiss the charges against Lindy Heiss. And reply requested, so we're requesting a reply from the court. And this is submitted as a friend of the court by Joseph Barton and Paula Gloria Barton. And we had it notarized, and I also call to their attention that I'm the producer of Farther Down the Rabbit Hole TV show for no, Manhattan. You don't need to read that part. I think I should read it. I, need to, I want to read it anyway. It's good. For the public record, unregistered foreign agents. Collecting information and contributions for a foreign power is a highly restricted activity requiring a foreign agent registration. Officers of the court have acted in collusion as unregistered foreign agents, 18 U.S.C. Section 951, serving the interests of foreign powers attempting to collect information and contributions while acting on behalf of Interpol, the International Monetary Fund, and the Middle Temple of the Crown. It is plain and clear that Lindy Heiss cannot be lawfully compelled to participate in felonies or misdemeanors being executed by unregistered foreign agents acting to secure information and contribution for foreign, uh, with a foreign terrorist organization established by the Nazi Gestapo Colonel Otto Steinhaus as per attached exhibit made a part thereof and known as Interpol with former SS officer Paul Dickoff as president yeah. in 1968 to 1972, said information being transmitted via Maryland State Police as per page 276 of the 2003-2004 United States Government Manual while said agents know or should know that being in the service of a foreign power being in the service of a foreign power voids citizenship as a matter of law lindy heiss was seized for the purpose of a summary collection of information and contributions for a foreign power in violation of 18 usc section 951 
Indeed, an arms assault executed by unregistered foreign agents cannot be converted to a crime on the part of living soul Lindy Heiss when she was simply the victim of fraud. The prosecutor in the courtroom and the tormentors outside the courtroom would have everyone believe they work for the state of Oregon or some political <laughs> subdivision thereof. However, they do not work for the state of, of, of Oregon. Are they paid in constitutional gold? No. Constitutional silver? No. Warrants or checks? Yes. States are prohibited from emitting bills of credit, and warrants or checks are clearly bills of credit. Furthermore, the state cannot do indirectly that which is prohibited directly. Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution for the United States has never been repealed. These characters are in fact and in law unregistered foreign agents, an activity punishable by 10 years in prison plus a $75,000 fine. Indeed, they would have the public believe that they are the state of Oregon, subsidized by the United States federal government. However, even the so-called federal agents are paid by the Secretary of the Treasury, also known as, the, as Governor of the Bank and the Fund, 22 U.S.C. Section 286, as opposed to the Treasurer of the United States. Secretary of the Treasury is not the same as Treasurer of the United States. Timothy Geithner is expatriated, has absolutely no allegiance to the United States of America, as per Mandaro versus World Bank, 717 F. 2nd, 6110, CADC, 1983, and enjoys diplomatic immunity and ambassador status. Timothy Geithner and his agents do not work for the United States. They are working for the receiver in bankruptcy, as per 5 U.S.C. Section 903, Reorganization Plan Number 26. The alien corporate governor of the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development and the International Monetary Fund, 22 U.S.C. Section 286A. It is axiomatic that these alleged agents cannot serve two masters. Reason alone would indicate that the principal is not the United States or any of the states united. The real party of interest is the International Monetary Fund and the Bank for Reconstruction and Development, 22 U.S.C. Section 611A. Anyone who chooses to go into the service of a foreign power automatically gives up his citizenship as a matter of law, as per 8 U.S.C. Section 1481 and 50 U.S.C. Section 781, verifiable by looking inside a United States passport. It is clear that the entire persecution causing suffering in this matter is a great fraud in that nowhere has living soul Lindy Heiss been apprised of the true nature and cause of any accusation. The jurisdiction and authority under which unregistered foreign agents are proceeding, thereby prejudicing her defense and violating her perfect immemorial, immemorial imprescriptible right. This may raise an issue of 18 U.S.C. Section 951 and much more. It is a clearly established principle of law that a corporation being incorporeal and a creature of the law must be represented by an attorney. An attorney representing an artificial entity must appear with a corporate charter and law in his hand. A person acting as an attorney for a, corp for a foreign principal must be registered pursuant to the Foreign Agents Registration Act, 22 U.S.C. Section 612 and sequences. See Victor Rabinowitz et al. versus Robert F. Kennedy, 376 U.S. 605-11-L, ed. 2nd, 940-84-SCT-919. And any persecutor and or associates appearing on behalf of said international agents failed and neglected to establish authority and has acted in collusion to prosecute frivolous, false, and sham allegations in what can now be seen as a blatant extortion on behalf of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, utilizing abusive process and whatever nefarious means available without regard to law on an above-the-law basis. 
The United States and the state of Oregon are completely and totally bankrupt. There is no constitutional authority for operating under bankruptcy. The legislative, executive, and judicial branches no longer exist as the alleged government has been dissolved and the entire country has been received in bankruptcy by the International Monetary Fund through a series of emergency acts. Indeed, as for three branches of government, there is a greater likelihood of the existence of Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, and the Man in the Moon because the entire operation is owned and operated by a multifaceted organization whose principle is the IMF and the World Bank. We deny the false and fraudulent allegation that the de jure state of Oregon is the real party in interest. And note for the record that the state of Oregon is used by any unregistered foreign agent, attorney, or associate as used by any unregistered foreign agent, attorney, or associate is the alter ego of the fund and the bank. And as a voting stock shareholder and corporator, 22 U.S.C. Section 286E, and while under numerous disabilities and in fraud and contravention of and to the supreme law of the land and foreign state, has waived and relinquished sovereign character. See the Bank of USA versus Planters Bank of Georgia, 6 L. Ed. 244. De facto foreign agents, while acting under false and fraudulent pretense, and colors of authority were and are soliciting and collecting information, contributions, loans, money, or other things uh, of me. value. You guys are going to have to take this outside of our property. You're making the customers uncomfortable with the camera. It's, right. it's, it's going to run out anyway. It's an emergency acts. Here we are at the Senate House State Historic Site. It's not open until mid April. But what Cho and I want to do right now is read the first version of the New York Constitution. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, and whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes and accordingly all experience hath shown that mankind are more deposed, disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations, presuming invariably the same, pursuing invariably the same object, evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patent sufferance of these colonies and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former system of government. The history of the present King of Great Britain is a history of repeated in injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let's fa let facts be submitted to a candid world. <laughs>